Say that. As I pray by the Holy Spirit within me, it's my spirit that's praying. And Paul calls it in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, that when my spirit prays, it is called speaking in tongues, or speaking in tongues is called praying in the spirit. One Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. I'm reading from the amplified version for this particular verse. And Paul writes here and he says, Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me. And I also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. I will sing with my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me. But I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding also. We began having a look at the power of praying in the Spirit. This is a message that, was, that, that, that my pastor, Apostle Theo Vormans, taught quite a while back, and it, was, it so inspired me. I really wanted to bring the, the message to us as we recently have just had a look at the nine gifts of the Spirit, and we saw that there, there was the gifts of speaking in other tongues, and along with that, the gift of interpretation. And in that study, as I mentioned a few things, the difference between the gift and the prayer, the Holy Spirit really prompted me that at this time, He wants to inspire us as a church to become more enthusiastic about our praying in the Spirit. Now, why is that so important? Now, here's what we need to understand. that Remember when Jesus said that to the disciples that when He goes, He will send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would remind us of what we've been taught. I really want to encourage us today that as we go through the study that we, particularly those that have been with us for some time and have been through the spiritual growth seminar, maybe you've heard me teach it very often, talking about what it means to speak in other tongues. And sometimes we can go through these scriptures and as I'm teaching, you think, well, but I've heard that before. I, I know what that is and I know what that's about. And I really have been prompted in my own heart so many times that sometimes I look at the message and I'm listening to it or whatever. My, maybe my pastor's busy teaching. I go, yeah, I know that verse and I know that scripture. But I taught myself very early on as a Christian when Jesus said the Holy Spirit will remind you of what you've been taught. Paul told Timothy to stir up that which is in him through the laying on of hands. The spirit of faith is having believed, I speak. Speak what? Speak what you've believed. And so very often we know that what can happen in time is you may know something about a subject, you may understand it, maybe you've been through Bible college and you got 100% in your test for it. That's not enough for us to be able to live this. The just shall live by faith and faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So when we live by faith, we take the faith that is within us and we apply it, that faith needs to be replenished. That faith needs to be strengthened again. Just the same way in our own physical bodies, that whenever we eat a meal, that meal will provide sustenance. We feel like we're full. We've eaten enough. We feel when, when we go and walk or train or run or whatever we're doing, we have enough energy for that. But you know if you don't eat again, that energy is going to be used up. It's going to be drained. And then we can get to a place where we're hungry. And what do we do when we're hungry? We fill up again. And so the same way when it comes to faith. If we're living by faith and we're applying faith, that faith flows. It flows out of us. Remember Jesus, when the woman of blood touched him, he felt this Holy Spirit flow into her. Their virtue flowed from him. And so the power of God moves and it flows. And we know that faith needs to be replenished. It needs to be built again. And so the more we hear the word of God, the stronger our faith becomes. And so the Holy Spirit will remind us of what we've been taught. Then Jesus said he would guide us into truth and he would show us things to come. See that, that past, present, future. And so the Holy Spirit's always taking us from what we've learned before, reminding us so that we are able to stay in the truth. Because if we don't keep renewing our minds to these things, other influences come along, other things happen, and the enemy knows how this works. What I'm explaining here, the enemy knows very well how it works, and he will make sure if somebody's not giving their attention to the Word of God, 
He will make sure there's other inputs, all kinds of other information that's going to come along and start to distract us and start to lead us off into a different direction. Because if we don't purposefully come against all these other voices, they will start to take seed in our hearts and without even realizing it, growing up. And grow up into a tree and start producing fruit. And then all of a sudden we start thinking differently and thinking, now how did I even think that? Why would I think that? How come I start thinking? How, am I, how come I'm doubting God? How come I'm doubting whether He's going to look after me? How do I doubt that He's going to provide for me, that He's healed me? And so often that can happen. If I find there's a doubt in my life or there's a concern, where is God? Why is this not working? I realize I haven't spent enough time replenishing that faith that I need to have. And so the same way as we study out what are tongues and how we're supposed to walk in them, it really is to stir us up. It's not like a, for some of us, it may be new. For some of us, it may go, wow, I never saw that before. And I've seen that as well in my life, that as I study certain subjects that I know very well, and as I say, I could probably get 100% in, in, a, in a test for it. Yet as I study it, all of a sudden I see new revelation. God just opens up another facet of it, and it takes you to a higher level, and you become more effective and more skilled in it. And as a result, you see better results in your life as well. So always stir that up. Be listening and say, Lord, I want to hear this again. I need to have the faith of this. Build me up. Strengthen me, because as I do, I'm going to see my Christian life go to another level. And then he'll guide us into truth, and then he'll show us things to come. God has got great plans for you. Great plans. Now, every single human, every human that's ever been born into this earth was born with a specific destiny of God. God provided for it. He supplied for it. And He set you on a mission. And that means everything you need to fulfill your mission has already been provided for. Well, then how come some people don't see it? Some people never even come to salvation. And so even though God has a great plan for them, they never find out what that plan is and could die and land up going to hell. But praise God, He sent His Son, Jesus, so that when you're saved, you are born again into His kingdom. Now, as you find out what your purpose is, He's already provided for that. And God doesn't want you going through it sick and broken and busted and disgusted. He wants you provided for. He wants you healed and, and healthy and strong to be able to do it successfully. And so if that is the case, then how come we see so many Christians that may not be walking in that? And that's what we're opening up here because everything that we receive from God has to be received by the Spirit of God, by faith. And how does that faith come? By hearing. And so as we listen to the Word of God and we receive it, now we have to set it in motion. We have to cause that future that God has prepared for us to manifest. And so, yeah, we see Paul saying that we recognize that there is praying that happens with the natural understanding, using our own intelligence, our own language, the home language that you may have. Or, he says, you can pray in the Spirit, by the Spirit that is within me. Now, in the Amplified, that by the Spirit that is within me, that's in brackets because that wasn't in the original text. We, but he's talking about praying in the Spirit, and we recognize that it is by the Holy Spirit that we are able to pray that way. Because if you go and have a look at Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them. Now who was that? That's the Holy Spirit. Notice it says in verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Just say that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit filled every single member, those 120 sitting in the upper room. That is your first church. Now they've all been, you know, they, they, when Jesus appeared to some of his disciples, he breathed his Holy Spirit on them. That's when they were born again. Now they gathered together. This is the first gathering as a church. And the Holy Spirit fills every single one of them, all of them. And they says, yeah, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. The very first church service ever. Every single person sitting there was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. It wasn't just a select few. 
So you can see that God's desire is for every believer to be able to speak in their heavenly prayer language, in other tongues, as the Spirit gives them utterance. And so it's by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we're able to speak in other tongues. So that it is by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit within me that I am able to speak and pray in other tongues. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at the most, and each in turn, and let one interpret. So this is talking about the, the gifts of speaking in other tongues when it becomes a prophetical word. So you've got the gift of speaking in tongues, and you've got the gift of prophecy. Now, prophecy is given in your home language. So if I spoke a prophecy... It would be in English. Anyone that understands English would understand what I'm saying. But if I spoke in other tongues, no one would understand that at that moment except the person that's been able to interpret. And that might be myself, it might be somebody else. And they would hear, and then they would speak in the English language the interpretation so everybody could hear it. But he says that's if, that's if we have a tongue as a spoken prophecy that needs to be interpreted, verse 28, but there, if there is no interpreter, then let him keep silent in church. In other words, you don't use tongues just to sound spiritual. I'm trying to say something and I need to sound spiritual so I make it in tongues. No, then rather don't speak. And he says, then let him speak to himself and to God. Instead, rather go into your prayer closet. So if you speak in tongues as a prophecy, there must be an interpretation. But if there's no interpretation and you still have an unction to pray, then rather go away because then it's, then it's no longer prophecy. Now you're praying because he says, yeah, speak to God. And speaking to God, we understand, is prayer. Now, with that understanding of praying to God in verse 2, he says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. See, family God, this is where, when, whenever you study any type of doctrine, you've got to be very cautious about just taking one verse and saying, you know, this is a doctrine. The Bible says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. And so by the same token, if you build a doctrine that has to be based on multiple scriptures, then if somebody takes one scripture on its own, they say, I don't see how you get that out of that scripture. It's because we've studied a lot of other scriptures. And through understanding what all the scriptures say, a revelation is built. A revelation comes to our hearts. So here again, we see that we don't speak to men, but to God. That's our prayer language. It says, no one understands him. That no one understands him would imply the language being used is no earthly language. Because if no one understands him, it doesn't matter what language you bring into that room. They're not going to understand what that person's saying. And so what's he talking about here? He's speaking in a tongue that is not an earthly language. This is your heavenly language. And then it says, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. In the spirit. So that's where that amplified version gets those brackets from. That, that I will pray in the spirit by the Holy Spirit that's in me. Say that, as I pray by the Holy Spirit within me, it's my spirit that's praying. And Paul calls it, in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, that when my spirit prays, it is called speaking in tongues, or speaking in tongues is called praying in the spirit. You see that? Okay. Praise God. So now, why is it so important to pray in other tongues? Why is it that if the word says, yeah, when you speak to God, no one understands him in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. That's one of the reasons that the enemy is so against the church speaking in tongues. Why is there so much controversy about it? Why is there so much discussion that, you know, some, for some reason, people want to stop the church from praying in other tongues? Now, with any of one of these doctrines, I don't think any person on their own is, is, is malicious against any particular doctrine. I believe Satan is the author of confusion. He is the one that tries to come and discredit any doctrine that God gives us. 
And so if it was just that simple, that just that you have to believe that God is God and you'll go to heaven, it doesn't matter what else you believe, the gospel would be very, very simple, and anyone that believes would be saved. Well, then where do all these controversies come from about various parts of the doctrine? Well, we understand that the enemy understands how powerful these things are. And if he knows faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, well, doubt comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Satan. Does that make sense? Doubt will come. Doubt is there to cause a destruction of what God's instituted into your heart. And so what the devil will do is he'll start to start discrediting what God teaches. There has to be a reason. Why, is he have, why does he have such a problem with speaking in other tongues? Well, it's evident, yeah, the Bible says that you speak mysteries. Now, if it's a mystery to us as we pray in tongues, you notice when you first pray in tongues, very often you don't know what you're praying. Now, you can pray and ask God for an interpretation. But at the time of your praying, at that moment, you don't know what you're praying. Because if you knew, you could pray it in English. But as you're praying in tongues, you're praying in the Holy Spirit. It is a mystery. The Bible says no one understands it, including the devil. So when you're praying in the Spirit, it's not you praying anymore. It's the Holy Spirit in you that's giving you words. And God is speaking a prayer that's more powerful than your English language. Any earthly language. I can take something, if I wanted to state something in English, I'm limited to the amount of words that are in the dictionary. And the words in the dictionary only describe what already exists on the planet. Yeah. Our faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. God has said He's prepared things for us that eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. There are things in the realm of the Spirit that they, if, if you saw it in the realm of the Spirit, number one, your eyes would look at it, and you would, if you didn't see it with your own eyes, you wouldn't believe it existed. It's like, what? What do you even call that thing? Now imagine I stepped into the realm of the Spirit, I saw that thing, and then I came back into the realm of the natural, and I come to you, and I try and explain to you what I've just seen. Why, how do I tell you what a hombregesirbontogu looks like? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It, it, there's, no, there's no earthly language. I say, well, you know, do you, do you, do you know what a, a, a car is? Yes, it's nothing like that. Do you know what a spaceship is? Well, kind of, I've seen it in movies. It's nothing like that. Do you know what a fiery chariot is? Yeah, it's nothing like that. I'm talking about a vehicle you, I can't even explain. In fact, a vehicle is not the right word because it takes you from heaven to earth in an instant. Do you understand what I'm saying Yeah, When Elijah was picked up, all they could say was it's a fiery chariot. But I mean, you know, that's all that the, the writer could say. Elisha didn't know, have any other words for it. It's just he saw <laughs> Elijah gets in, <laughs> off he goes. Now, how do you put that into English or whatever language he was talking at the time? You see what I'm saying? So, when you're praying in tongues, you are speaking a mystery that your own earthly mind won't even understand, and you couldn't put into it. That's why we call it interpretation. It's not translation, because if you translate it, you still have to be talking about things that don't exist. But interpretation means you now put into words that we understand, but really it was released in the realm of the Spirit. That's why when you pray in the Spirit, it's not your natural mind. That's why when people, that's one of the ways that the enemy will try and stop us from praying in other tongues, is by saying, that, sound, you know, that sounds like gibberish. You know what people think of you when you pray like that? It sounds foolish, stupid, it's just gibberish. No, it's not, because it doesn't matter what comes out my mouth. It, might, it, it, it can sound like, when you hear some people pray in tongues, it actually sounds like a language. Others, it just sounds like babbling. And then you get to the place where you groan. I've been in times when I couldn't even form words. It was just a groaning coming out of my spirit. But what's happening? It's the Holy Spirit praying. It doesn't matter what you hear with, my ear, with your ears. It doesn't matter what comes how my lips form. As long as I am releasing a sound from my inner man. That sound from the inner man is the Holy Spirit releasing in the realm of the Spirit. Not in the realm of the natural. In the realm of the Spirit, mysteries that Satan doesn't even know what's been said. He would prefer it if you prayed in English, because whatever you ask for, he can set up a plan to try and stop. And that's happened. As you're praying in English, he thinks, well, if that's what you want, I can always put a block there and try and stop that.
And then as you pray in the Spirit, as you release it in the Holy Spirit, so you move into a realm where Satan's not able to stop it. Let's have prayer meetings, prayer clusters, prayer groups. Let's, let's get praying and let's get interceding. We want to see the tide of this scourge turn. We must pray and we must intercede like we've never had before. And God has given us the power of praying His language, praying in other tongues. Because we don't know. I don't know. We don't know what it's going to take to stop this. Even scientists, they're coming up with the best they know what to produce. And they still say it doesn't work 100%. But you know what? We have a God who knows how to heal spirit percent. Total healing. Total provision. Total prosperity. How's that going to happen when we pray? What do we pray for? I don't know. The Holy Spirit does. And so as I give myself, Lord, I don't know what it's going to take to stop this disease, but you do. Pray. 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 Because family of God, it's time for this land to heal. I say that it's time for South Africa to heal Amen. and any other nation that's listening to this. Amen. But we as the church, we must put ourselves in a place saying, God is in control when I give him control. How do I do that? By praying in the spirit. Amen. And now the tide can be turned, the veil removed, and people can get saved, healed, and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you receive something today? Are you blessed? Come on, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Come, let's stand together and everyone just lay your hand on your heart and say this with me. Today I have heard the word of God. That word brought faith to my heart. And I am a believer, not a doubter. As a hearer of your word, I'm also a doer. And so from this day on, I make a quality decision. I will center myself. In the perfect will of God, as I pray in the Spirit, I'm setting time aside to pray in tongues more than I have ever before. I'm increasing my time of praying in tongues because I know as I do, God heals the land. He chose, He spoke, He's made a decision that He will move when people pray. So he's put it in our hands to pray. And so now, as we pray, by his calling, he brings to pass his perfect will and plan in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give him praise and glory. Every day, all day, God is offering you opportunities to prosper, to be blessed, change your life forever. Prayer is such a powerful gift from God, yet it's been so misunderstood in the body of Christ. In this series, Alan Back delves into some of the types of prayer, but really gets specifically into the power of praying in the Spirit. Why is it so important? Why is it so necessary to have in our lives? In the series, Alan Back teaches on the power of praying in our personal prayer language and shares how praying in the Spirit can benefit your life as well as the lives of others in amazing ways. How I mean, you understand if you take everything that I've taught there and apply that in your life, you're going to live a powerful Christian life. Visit us online to get hold of your series or contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries offices. Get hold of your series and step into the power that comes with praying in the Spirit. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Would Christians begin to pray and intercede just before we close off for today? We want to make sure that everybody here, under the sound of my voice, is in the right relationship with Jesus. You've heard the gospel today in one method, one way. And that is that God loves you. But for you to walk in His perfect plan, we need to be saved. And God would have that none should perish. Sometimes people think God sends people to hell. No, it's our own sin. It's our own sin. Every single human was destined to hell. But praise God in His love, He sent Jesus to die in your place. 
He paid for your sin on your behalf. He went to hell for you and then rose from the dead, proving you are now forgiven in the mind of the Father. Forgiven, totally forgiven. And all you have to do is believe. The Bible says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And this is your moment of prayer right here. I want to lead you in that prayer. And if you're saying today, yes, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. God, please save me. Then pray this prayer out loud with me. I'm going to ask people around you to pray along. Because I want you to know that we're in this with you together. But if you're praying this for the first time, say this verbally. You need to hear yourself saying it. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for my sin. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe it. I call you Lord. You are my Savior. And from this day on, I live for you to serve you. One day, I will leave this earth. And I'll stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again, a child of God. Welcome back, everyone. And to those that just committed their life to the Lord, congratulations. We have a gift that we'd like to get to you. So if you just committed your life to the Lord, please go to our website and send us your details so that we can get this gift to you as soon as possible. Now, if you enjoyed this and like to listen to the entire series by yourself on your own time, please go to our website so that you can download it for yourself and that way you can listen to it wherever and whenever. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us on Wisdom for Life. I'm Joshua Bag. Remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. See you tomorrow. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Whether you're interested in information about starting your journey as a believer or growing in your understanding and faith, Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. If you're looking to participate in our services and television programs, or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources, whether you're looking for information about Alan Bagg Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbaggministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.